The mayor of Washington, D.C., appeared in federal court today on drug charges. Barry and Barry was arrested last night in an FBI sting operation at a downtown Washington hotel. The FBI said they videotaped him smoking crack cocaine. Barry was mobbed by reporters and cameramen as he arrived at U.S. District Court this afternoon for a 10-minute appearance. The charge presented to the judge was a misdemeanor for cocaine possession. The U.S. attorney said Barry faced a maximum one year in prison and a $100,000 fine if convicted. Barry's lawyer told reporters the mayor would not plead guilty if formally charged with the crime. Barry had a brief comment. I know that a number of you would be interested and curious about uh, a set of events and activities, but because this matter is in court, uh, unfortunately, I cannot comment or react to or give you any information about uh, this particular charge. And I would urge you uh, not to ask me any detailed question about that because you know that in the judicial system we can't answer them. Uh, on the other hand, I'm going to, uh, to leave here and go about the business of government. Thank you. Later, Barry said he was relinquishing his day-to-day -day duties as mayor, but he is still holding on to the title of mayor. The news came in a press release. He said a city administrator will take over most of the job's daily functions. We'll have more on this story after the news summary. Judy? Jurors in the trial of Washington, D.C. Mayor Marion Barry today watched a videotape of the FBI sting operation which led to his arrest. The videotape showed the mayor at first refusing to smoke a pipe which allegedly contained crack cocaine. Later, his companion, Rashida Moore, who was an old friend working as an FBI informant, challenged him to do so. Here's an excerpt from that tape. Defense lawyers are expected to claim that Barry was a victim of entrapment. Delegated many of his duties as mayor of the nation's capital, but did not resign. Word of this came hours after the D.C. mayor was brought before a federal magistrate on misdemeanor drug charges, buying and using crack cocaine. After months of rumors, accusations, and denying he used drugs. Barry was arrested overnight in an FBI drug sting operation, reportedly videotaped by the FBI. Barry's lawyer said the veteran mayor will plead not guilty. All of this raises questions about Barry's political future, Jesse Jackson's plans, and a city already plagued by drug crime and record high violence, including murders. Law correspondent Rita Braver begins our coverage. Mayor Marion Barry was still drawing cheers in his neighborhood, even after his arrest last night on charges of using crack. In an FBI undercover operation, Sources say former model Rashida Moore, described as a cooperating government witness, allegedly lured the mayor to a rendezvous for romance and drugs. While a videotape rolled in this Washington hotel, U.S. attorneys and FBI agents watched over a hidden closed-circuit camera as the mayor allegedly gave more money for cocaine. Unknown to Barry, she then obtained cocaine from an undercover officer standing by on the scene. An affidavit filed by one of the watching agents said, I observed Mr. Barry take possession of the crack cocaine and inhale on the lit smoking apparatus. Agents then burst in to make the arrest. The U.S. attorney said the setup was not illegal entrapment. He entered on his own volition. Uh, he uh, himself put himself in that situation. Flanked by his wife, the mayor appeared in federal court today where he was told he could face up to a year in prison and prosecutors said his urine and blood tested positive for cocaine. He was released on personal bond pending trial. We'll enter a plea of not guilty. The mayor refused to discuss the charges. Uh, on the other hand, I'm going to, uh, to leave here 
and go about the business of government. But late today, Barry said he'll keep the title of mayor, but will turn over his day-to-day -day duties to the city administrator. Barry has weathered years of allegations that he's a drug user. Two witnesses have even testified to it before federal grand juries. Barry always dismissed the charges. But I've never bought, used, sold, or uh, indulged in cocaine. But never before was the mayor captured on videotape. The turmoil led him to postpone a scheduled Sunday kickoff of his run for a fourth term. But Reverend Jesse Jackson, considered a possible rival to Barry, would not use the incident as a launching pad. I, I do not intend to address the legal and political ramifications of this issue, issue today. As for complaints circulating through Washington that the drug case is racially motivated... There's absolutely no basis to that claim. We will follow every allegation that we, that we receive. We will pursue them aggressively against an individual regardless of their station, regardless of their place, regardless of their race. But no one is counting the mayor out. Prosecutors acknowledge that with his popularity in the city, it will be difficult to convict him. But they say the case is strong, the videotape's compelling, and the investigation continuing with more charges possible. Rita Braver, CBS News, Washington. Marion Barry, today a sad story of personal tragedy and very likely political demise. It wasn't always that way. He was one of those daring, uh, courageous people uh, who was there on the picket line, sitting in at the lunch counters, going to jail. Barry's contemporaries in the black civil rights movement were today talking of his noble past as the first chairman of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, as one of those who first channeled the new black political awareness of the 60s into action and results. He has always been a people's man, uh, down to earth, and concerned about the problems of the poor. The son of Mississippi sharecroppers, he had led black voter registration campaigns in the South and marches on Washington. So help me God. So help me God. You're in. He helped replow the political landscape, and then, knowing its furrows, was easily elected as Washington's mayor. He embodied hope in people who now feel despair. We have, you know, placed our souls with these people. Every time one falls, every time one is diminished, you know, it, it hurts us. It hurts us to our core. Down with dope. Down with dope. Even in recent years, while under frequent suspicion for drug use, Barry campaigned against drugs. Some now call this hypocrisy. But the experts see cases of drug use in people like Barry all the time. They start to feel that they're untouchable. And once that happens, they're in great danger. But Barry was more than just a success. To those who populate the nation's capital, and more importantly, to their children, he was a hero and more. Today at Spingarn High School, it was all the kids were talking about. And he has been a role model for a lot of youths, and everyone looks up to him. And right now, he has disappointed a lot of youths. He's a good man. He has done a lot for the city. What the teachers trying to keep the kids off drugs are looking at is disillusionment. I think that there is a disappointment, even with the kids who say that he's a role model, that there is a sense of uh, disappointment, a sense of, uh, well, where do we go from here? Marion Barry, once so firmly entrenched in his constituency that he was called mayor for life. But a losing battle with cocaine may well have cut that political life short. One of his friends said today that power is a magnet to temptation, and Marion Barry succumbed. Mark Phillips, CBS News, Washington. We go first tonight to the drug arrest of Washington, D.C. Mayor Marion Barry. As we reported, the mayor was arrested in a joint FBI-D.C. police sting operation at a Washington hotel last night. Law enforcement officials said he was videotaped buying and smoking crack cocaine. After an appearance in federal district court today, Mayor Barry and his wife and attorney emerged to face a horde of journalists. The mayor and his lawyer had little to say. A few minutes earlier, Barry had been advised of the charges against him and was formally booked in a courthouse cell block. He was then released but ordered to return for weekly drug tests. Joining us now for a newsmaker interview is J.B. Stevens, the U.S. attorney in Washington who put together the undercover operation which resulted in Mayor Barry's arrest. Mr. Stevens, thank you for being with us. My pleasure, Judy. What exactly happened in that hotel room last night to, that led to the mayor's arrest? Well, last night, the, as you indicated, the FBI and the Metropolitan Police Department 
had set up an operation, we call it an undercover operation, uh, designed to investigate certain allegations. It's an investigative technique that can be used to follow up on those allegations where you have uh, some predicate information that would suggest that someone is predisposed uh, with respect to certain kinds of criminal conduct. What do you mean predicate information? Well, predicate information would suggest that there's some evidence that has been developed that would provide a basis to believe that uh, an individual has engaged in uh, criminal conduct or is disposed to engage in certain kinds of criminal conduct. Uh, and an operation was developed uh, around that, and particularly around an individual who had uh, a relationship uh, with Mr. Berry, uh, and that uh, operation was designed and focused on uh, developing a, a scenario uh, to see uh, whether or not uh, he would be involved in or was involved in uh, narcotics abuse. This was a, uh, we have read today the reports that this was a woman the mayor had known, uh, that, that the FBI, I suppose your office was involved, brought her to Washington and used her in effect to get the mayor to come to this hotel room uh, to engage in some sort of drug transaction. Is that pretty much what well, happened? Well, I don't want to, to comment on the individual in particular other than to say uh, there was someone involved in the operation who had a long-standing prior relationship uh, to Mr. Berry. Uh, obviously, as the scenario unfolded, Mr. Berry came to the hotel himself of his own free will. Uh, he was driven there in his uh, uh, city limousine. Uh, he came to the hotel room on the seventh floor uh, of his own doing, uh, and uh, as obviously indicated by the charges that were filed, uh, engaged, and we believe the evidence will show, uh, in the possession of, of crack cocaine while in that room. The, the reports I read today say that the court papers indicate that there was money exchanged, that he uh, gave someone an amount of, of currency and receive something back. If, if, you ha if this occurred, if you have pictures of this, because we also understand there was video taping, why are you charging him only with possession? Well, the initial charge uh, is possession, and I don't want to, to comment on or confirm uh, the, con the issue you raised with regard to the exchange of funds and money. But uh, as a general practice where a distribution charge uh, would lie, you would need to demonstrate that uh, someone was distributing to another individual generally not for personal use uh, and there is some issue of course whether uh, the facts here would support that uh, we th believe the facts here will clearly support uh, the charge which we expect to lodge and that is the possession of crack cocaine as you know the mayor's friends and supporters are already saying that this is entrapment that the government went out of its way to manufacture a situation uh, where the mayor would be uh, enticed into doing something illegal how do you respond well, to that? I respond to that by saying uh, this was an undercover investigative technique that is a, a standard type of technique uh, used in sophisticated investigations. It was carefully reviewed. Uh, our office made uh, sure that uh, we would comply with all the law. Uh, and with respect to entrapment in particular, where there is predisposition, I said, uh, where there is predicate uh, evidence, entrapment really is not a defense. And while I can't speak to the evidence specifically in this case, uh, let me say as a, as a general policy, where we could establish that uh, by evidence we had developed there is conduct that someone is uh, involved in certain kinds of transactions where the evidence suggests by either the prior relationship or subsequent conduct that they uh, are interested in that kind of conduct, I don't really think entrapment uh, is a substantial issue. Well, are you confident that you can prove that there was this predisposition that, that you keep referring to? Do you, I think, you... as I've indicated, that we reviewed this operation uh, very carefully. I think uh, entrapment uh, while it has a, a certain ring of appeal to uh, anyone uh, who is caught in a, in a sting operation, uh, in this case, really has uh, very little, actually no legal basis. The other, the other charge that I think is already being heard here in, in uh, the district uh, it has to do with there being an element of racism here, that here you have federal officials who, while people are, are dying in the streets practically here in Washington because of uh, drug-related violence, families are disintegrating because of, of drug trafficking and so forth. You spend the time and energy and personnel in your office going after a possession, a misdemeanor, against the mayor. How do you explain that? Well, there's several, several points on that, uh, Judy. First of all, this wasn't just a federal operation. Metropolitan Police Internal Affairs was involved in this very much as a team. Uh, secondly, our, our office spends the bulk of its resources fighting uh, narcotics and, and homicides. Uh, and third, uh, 
Well, this is in, in many respects a personal tragedy uh, for Mr. Berry, uh, as I think the evidence would demonstrate. Uh, drugs really are not uh, victimless crimes. And I think your point there really is that the community here in Washington has suffered uh, really a devastating blow from narcotics and violence. Our families are disintegrating. Uh, they are victims of, of crime, uh, victims of drugs. The community is victims of drugs. Individuals are victims of drugs. And I think in this case, one could make the, the argument that indeed the whole city has been the victims of drug abuse as last night's uh, events demonstrated. Do you think you have a case that's going to stick here? I think we uh, would not have brought a case that we believed we could not support uh, based on the evidence and the law. Well, Jay Stevens, we appreciate your being with us. Thank you very much, Judy. We will talk with a Washington columnist and with our own team of Gergen and Shields about the political fallout from the mayor's arrest. But first, correspondent Kwame Holman has this background report. Leaving the courthouse after appearing before a judge on cocaine charges this afternoon, Mayor Marion Barry had little to say. But for years, Washingtonians had a lot to say about persistent allegations of cocaine use and the active nightlife of their mayor. Stand by! Welcome, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Kojo. It's always a pleasure to be with you on evening exchange here at the Channel 32. On Monday night in Los Angeles, comedian Jimmy J.J. Walker at the Comedy Cafe said, I just got back from the city of Washington, and Mayor Marion Barry gave me the kilo to the city. It got big laughs. In December 1988, Mayor Barry made several visits to his friend Charles Lewis in a Washington hotel room. Mr. Lewis, can you tell us what you were doing at the Ramada Inn that night? Lewis was under police surveillance for allegedly selling cocaine. Lewis reportedly admitted smoking crack cocaine with Mayor Barry and passed two lie detector tests about that assertion. Mr. Lewis, did you offer a made drug? The mayor denied Lewis's charge. Lewis was sentenced to 15 months on his cocaine conviction today. The Lewis incident touched off a storm of press coverage, forcing Barry to explain and apologize. At no time did I see any drugs, use any drugs, or have any knowledge of any drugs. I'm sorry. I, I apologize to, to our citizens. I apologize to, to, to the country for putting our city into this kind of situation. In an interview with the NewsHour last January and throughout the year, Mayor Barry denied ever using drugs or having a drug problem. I was apologizing to the public for them feeling embarrassed. The news media had, had taken this around the world, made Washington look like Sin City, that here's a mayor who's uh, involved with drugs, and I have never used drugs, don't need to use them. Mr. Mayor, is it embarrassing when the Conference of Mayors is in town to be subpoenaed before a grand jury, and that being the front page of the newspapers? Y'all did that. The early incidents did not lead to indictment of Barry, but they were just the latest in a long string of personal and political trouble for the 53-year-old three-term mayor. In 1984, the first major cocaine allegation against Barry reportedly came from former city worker Karen Johnson. After being convicted of selling cocaine, Johnson said she sold cocaine to the mayor, then recanted the statement. She served a seven-month jail sentence for contempt of court. I have no comment. Mayor Barry also denied Johnson's allegations. No charges were brought against him. In the interview last year, the mayor claimed a distinction between his private and public lives. I ran for mayor in 78. I didn't run to be pope or to be bishop or to be a presiding elder or to be a preacher. I ran to be mayor. And I figured my private life, as long as I didn't do anything illegal and do anything outrageous, was my private life. The rules of the game have changed now. I'm under scrutiny 24 hours a day. No other man in America is under you know, this, this much scrutiny. I guess I've sort of become bigger than life. Washington Post reporter and commentator Juan Williams covered Barry during his early years in office and has written often about the mayor. If we look back to the beginning and try to get a sense of what was the expectation for Marion, I think the whole town wanted him to do well. And once he won, saw him as sort of the embodiment of young black political power. It was during the civil rights movement that a young Marion Barry learned his political skills. The son of Mississippi sharecroppers, Barry cut short his Ph.D. work in chemistry to become an activist. I have always will and have been my own man. After two short stints in elective offices in Washington, Barry became the upset winner of the 1978 mayor's race. 
Some Barry observers believe he remained committed to the goals of the civil rights movement, but his image problems hurt his ability to meet those goals. We shall someday. Political scientist Alvin Thornton of Howard University in Washington. Black mayors of his type are not elected just to be mayors, they're elected to change things to change economic life chance and, and economic and life chances, to change people's uh, housing conditions and all of that. And he's not been able to do that primarily because that's the nature of urban America, but also because I think uh, he's made some choices uh, that have distract, detracted attention and uh, from his ability to do that. Look at all of the totality of Marion Barry's service to this community, and look at the quality of life improvements uh, look at the fact we've balanced our budget. Uh, the poor here have more services than anywhere in the country. The most comprehensive homeless program anywhere in the country. But now city leaders fear the effect the mayor's own drug arrest will have on a city plagued by a record number of drug-related homicides. Praying for you and your family. We'll be all right. If you decide to run again, we'll watch it. Don't. Thank God, my vote. Thank. What's your name? I'm Hill. Hill, good to see you. All the way. Thank you. I know all your people in the back. Thank you. Despite his problems, before his arrest last night, Barry had broad support, particularly among Washington's many low-income black residents. Last January, community activist Calvin Rolark described that loyalty. They see a hope in Marion Barry. Marion Barry is the type of person that will go in the back of, go in public housing and go through the back door and sit down and eat a, eat a bowl of beans. He likes to stay out, move in and out of clubs, and say hello and shake hands with people, and unloosen his tie, and just feel at home. Barry's arrest saddened and angered many Washington residents and complicated Washington's 1990 mayoral race, which Barry had expected to enter Sunday in search of a fourth term. The field is already crowded with four Democratic challengers to Barry. Now, attention will inevitably focus on Barry friend and ally, Jesse Jackson. Jackson has insisted he would never run against Barry, but in an unusual departure, Barry sharply criticized Jackson in a recent Los Angeles Times interview, saying Jackson would rather run his mouth than run Washington. In Chicago, Jackson's reaction today was one of compassion for Barry and his family. My mood right now is sorrow and sympathy and concern for Marion and the family and the family of Washington and people around the nation who are so concerned about, about the outcome of, of this matter. Long before last night's drug arrest, observers like the Post's Juan Williams said Marion Barry's seeming penchant for trouble has brought a sense of betrayal. People really, you know, feel that deeply that this is our town and we have an opportunity here to be a shining light of progressive black government. And, uh, and that that faith has been violated. We will round up all the week's political news with our regular team of Gergen and Shields. That's David Gergen, editor-at-large at U.S. News and World Report, and Mark Shields, syndicated columnist with The Washington Post. But first, we talk about the arrest of Washington's Mayor Barry. Joining us for that discussion is Dorothy Gilliam. Metro columnist for the Washington Post. She was one of the last of the city's commentators to call for Barry to step down from office. Dorothy Gilliam, first of all, before we talk about the politics of this, why do you think Marion Barry did this, assuming the charges are correct? And of course, we don't know until there's been a trial. I think you're right. We first of all have to say we don't know, and we must be careful to put everything in the context that he is innocent until proven guilty. And I think that, that the whole conversation has to be framed in that context. But I think, uh, you know, it, it seems to me clearly that if, if indeed all of this occurred as it has been laid out, then Mr. Barry has a serious problem. And I think that, you know, the questions have been asked, well, how could he fall for what seemed, uh, you know, such an obvious situation? And I think the answer is, as far as I can tell, that when you have a problem of this magnitude, 
that uh, you know your the your activities are not ones that we would call well thought out or, or well planned. So I think that is it's an indication of of you know the depth of the problem. Will his friends and supporters, and especially the friends and supporters in the black community in Washington, stick with him through this, or is this? the final straw? Well, I think that still remains to be seen. I think that there's a great deal of support for Mr. Barry, primarily because he is not seen in the context of only the last two or three years, but he's seen in that broader context. The context what do you mean? Of, uh, the context of a man who was one of the original Freedom Riders, the context of a man who was the first chairman of SNCC, uh, the context of a man who came into a city that was not particularly uh, active politically. And, and really began to uh, charge up uh, the little people, uh, you know, the, the ordinary people in the street. And so I think there's a lot of, 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 of caring about the mayor. I think in many instances it's a class issue, and he really he represented the, the, the little people as opposed to the middle class. And I use that word little people in all reverence, but, but simply to make what I think is an important distinction about his supporters. What are you hearing today? Are, are people that you're talking to saying this was a, clearly a setup, it was a vendetta, they were out to get the mayor, or are you hearing people uh, saying they understand what was taking place? I'm, hear, I'm hearing both. I'm hearing people who are saying they think it was a setup, but I'm hearing more people who are just expressing enormous sadness. Uh, you know, certainly the issue of entrapment has been raised and will be in you know, Mr. Barry's defense, but I think most people are beyond that. I think they are. They feel that the city uh, has been under quite a cloud. They still have a lot of support for Mr. Barry because they look at him as, as also in some ways kind of being victimized they, by the media, by, you know, the, they, they see almost a sort of a persecution of him by the, uh, by the legal forces. So I think that for a long time that feeling has been there. So I don't think people are going to change so rapidly so that by tomorrow the, the, the enormous support will fade. But I do see a change. I sense a change. I sense a change of people who feel in some ways they've been betrayed because he spoke so vehemently against drugs and he made it so clear that he had never done it. And denied it. And, the, and denied it so much. And, and to me it is, once again, uh, that's why I think there is also sympathy because clearly we're talking about somebody who has a problem and, and needs help. And I think that's, that's the context in which I think we should be viewing this. Mark and, and David, you both have, have obviously talked to people today. Uh, why do people think Marion Barry did this? I mean, is it another case of, of what we saw with Gary Hart, almost a death wish telling the press, follow me, I'm not guilty, and then turning around and being apparently guilty? David? Well, I think to go back to Drug's point, you know, we don't know what all the facts will turn out to be in this particular case. And we and want I think, to keep yeah, stressing we, yes, that. Yes, that's right. Uh, but but I, I do think the suspicion has, has been around in the city for some time, and now clearly it's been fueled, that he does have a drug problem. Uh, and that it, you know, he may, may, whether it's a habit or an addiction, I don't think one can tell, but there have been so many allegations over the years uh, that clearly uh, I think many people now feel the evidence uh, suggests he's become reckless. Uh, you know, he, everybody knew that he was being carefully watched. He was just about to uh, declare for a fourth term. Uh, so th that recklessness uh, is something which occurs in people who have these habits and can't seem to shake them. And I, I think there's a, there is a tragic quality here. I, have to, I would have to say, though, if he does have a problem, this may be a blessing in disguise because for, fun, for the first time he may really be able to get some help. Mark, is this the end politically for Mayor Barry, no matter what? comes out, or does he still have a, a straw of something he can hold on? I, I think, I think uh, two points. I think if, if, in fact, the charges are proved and he is convicted, I think it, it is the end for Marion Barry, because the, the, most, uh, the most devastating of all political charges to be leveled against any candidate is that of hypocrisy. And Marion Barry's practice, so we're, uh, the, the cruelest form of self-deception or, or municipal deception. I think the, the point you raised, and, and Dorothy alluded to earlier, the, the betrayal, uh, Gary Hart uh, is a great point of reference. Gary Hart in 1987 betrayed his own campaign, his workers, his volunteers, and he left the, can the, left the campaign trail. His campaign disappeared. Marion Barry, if in fact he is, he is guilty, has charged, has betrayed an entire city. He's betrayed a, a, a legacy. We, we in Washington, I've lived here for 25 years, have a very short history of self-government. He represents a disproportionately large share of that short history. And it is devastating. People who are against self-government, who uh, for one reason or another don't want blacks in position of leadership in this country, are having a field day tonight, thanks to what Marion Barry has done. Dorothy Gilliam, just one other question. After what's happened in Boston, 
uh, with, been in the news for weeks now, the Stewart murder and, and so forth, without going into the details of that. Do we, I mean, is there the potential in Washington that we could have uh, some sort of racial breakdown in this city? Uh, as a result of this, or is this such a different case that you don't see that happening? In many ways, I think it is a very different case. Uh, I think uh, there certainly exists a great deal of racial divisiveness and, a, and, and indeed hostility. Uh, in many ways, uh, Mr. Barry kind of was almost the, the pole around which a lot of that seemed to revolve. Uh, but we cannot uh, look at this in a very isolated way because there were so many, you know, societal factors. There's so many other things that, that really uh, impacted on, on what he was and what he did. So I don't, I don't think I would say that we would have uh, a breakdown of the, of the sort in Boston. But I do think that the, the racial hostility is probably going to increase in the, certainly in the near future. I would have a different view, and that was, that, in fact, we would have had more racial hostility had Marion Barry declared, run a campaign, and been elected because there are so many people suspicious of him. I think the sense of betrayal, and, and once you clear the Barry issue from the agenda, I think that the city can more easily unite behind a different leader. Assuming he does not run again, or, or even if he does, where does this leave Jesse Jackson, Mark? Well, I think Jesse Jackson, I mean, the challenge is to him. I mean, Jesse Jackson, uh, Marion Barry said it to uh, Bella Stumbo in the Los Angeles Times. Jesse don't want to run nothing, he just want to run his mouth, is, is the, the, the language in which uh, she described uh, uh, Marion Barry as, as using and describing Jesse Jackson. Jesse Jackson, I think, faces uh, the, the, the challenge of his career. He has a city in crisis to which he moved. Uh, where he is really being sought uh, to, to run uh, to, uh, for leadership. There are qualified candidates seeking the mayorship. I don't mean to denigrate them in any way. But the key is Jesse Jackson now has an office which is seeking him uh, for which, which he could win. Uh, in a city that needs uh, leadership, especially in the two areas that Jesse Jackson has been so visible and so vocal and, and I, I think so emphatic, uh, mm -hmm. but I drugs think... and, and, and childhood education. This is a city in crisis. And I, I think having ducked the chance to run for gov senator from South Carolina and having ducked the chance to run for mayor of Chicago, he came here. Uh, there's no excuses for his not running at this point. I just think there's something that had to be, has to be added to that analysis, and that is that there are many people in the city who have a very kind of different view of it. I mean, there's the, the carpet bagger uh, view that many, many people have. They feel that he is an outsider who has come in as kind of an interloper. Now, it seems to me, however, that if there is a carefully strategized uh, kind of campaign, that, that Mr. Barrett, Mr. Uh, Jackson still has a good chance. Uh, what I, I, I disagree again. I, back in May, the Washington Post took a poll, which included Marion Barry and Jesse Jackson, and asked people in this city, who do you want to see as mayor? And Jesse Jackson at that point was beating Marion Barry by 40% mm. to 10%. Mm. I think that Jesse Jackson does have a strength here. My, to elaborate on Mark's point, I would argue Mark, that this may well take Jesse Jackson out of 92 contention. He has a choice either out of the presidential, out of the presidential contention. contention because he has a choice now. He has, to, I think he's got a choice. He has to run for mayor, in which case that takes him out. Or if he doesn't run for mayor, then I think a lot of people are going to say he's yeah. run away from that responsibility. And I think it's going to diminish him in 92. And so either way, I think he becomes less of a factor in 92. My personal hope is he runs for mayor because I think it would, I think it would greatly enliven the race and he could be a very, very good leader to a lot of young people in this city.